I'm here today because I think the climate catastrophe that is impending is the most serious issue that humanity as a whole needs to address. It's extremely urgent and in a few generations of time, humanity as we know it may not exist. So we need to organise and be radical and be militant to create the systemic change that's necessary to address the climate crisis. And doing that internationally and building networks of solidarity across borders is the only way that we can change the current situation. So I'm here to talk to people and to brainstorm ideas, but most importantly, to organise action so that we can fight the climate crisis and build a new society. As I'm a UK citizen, I'm British. I'm here to represent the masses of people who are progressive, who are internationalist, and they still exist. And as you can see, you know, there was a big movement behind Jeremy Corbyn of leftists who wanted to transform society. That movement still exists because you will see it in the trade unions now, where we have um, left uh, leaders being elected uh, all across the board. And what we now need to do is take that movement and make it internationalist. How do we think of ourselves as part of the global working class, global workers and global humans who are organising together to transform society across borders? And that's the only way. We can't do it within our nation states. We have to think and imagine new formations across borders uh, in which we can act. The first thing is anti-capitalism because it's capitalist systems and corporations that are burning fossil fuels and who aren't interested in uh, addressing the climate crisis, who are just interested in making profits at the expense of the entire planet, that need to be tackled head on. And we need to put the responsibility squarely on them, not individual consumers who are trying their best. We need to squarely point the finger at the corporations and the capitalists who have created the climate catastrophe and that's how we can defeat climate change. The second issue is anti-racism and when I say anti-racism I mean structural anti-racism. So historically it's been Western European countries and Western countries like America who have contributed most to uh, carbon emissions that have caused the climate crisis. And in doing so, they've extracted labour and resources from the global south through colonialism historically and neocolonialism today. And so it's people in the global south who are suffering the most from the effects of the climate crisis, but who also have been exploited to create the climate crisis, to create the wealth in the West. So as Westerners, we need to acknowledge our responsibility in that and we need to be brave and courageous to um, create reparations and to make sure that the climate transition is just for the Global South. When countries in the Global South are industrializing, countries in the West need to support the transitions being sustainable. So one of our roles can be to help promote renewable energy generation in the global south by transferring funds and resources so that when those countries are developing and changing their economic systems that change is sustainable but also it's our role and our responsibility to do that because we created the climate crisis so we have to help pay for those countries that we exploited to have their own renewable transitions. Well, the classic representative democracy is not actually that democratic. It's a way of taking power away from the masses and away from people and concentrating it in the hands of a few uh, elected representatives. Now, as we've seen in Western society, elections now are being heavily manipulated by the mass media, by the establishment, uh, by lobbyists and corporations. And so citizens' assemblies are a much better way of genuinely democratizing politics because it's much harder for corporations to corrupt masses of individuals and citizens. Now, alongside that, we obviously need to involve workers as well, um, so trade unionists. We need to involve the Global South as well, so citizens' assemblies across the globe talking to each other, um, a free media so that people can communicate ideas that aren't manipulated by corporations. All of these things need to also be fought for around the assemblies, but they're definitely ways that we can actually transform politics and make it more democratic.